liberty, and tyranny. You can't truly understand one without the other. We can know what liberty is because we've seen the results of the opposite, the greatest theft of freedom at gunpoint in the history of mankind. Lee Edwards knows this as well as anyone. Just as we here at One Gen have dedicated our professional lives to promoting liberty, so Lee has dedicated more than a decade to promoting knowledge of tyranny. Because he knows the left sure as hell won't do so as they try to sweep under the rug their complicity in defending and justifying and sustaining tyranny. Lee was born and raised in Chicago and graduated from Duke University, how he ever became a conservative <laughs> after going to Duke. God only knows, but he is. He's a distinguished fellow in conservative thought at the B. Kenneth Simon Center for American Studies at the Heritage Foundation. He's considered one of the foremost historians of the conservative movement in America, publishing books on Ronald Reagan, Barry Goldwater, Ed Meese, who are, spoke to us here in November, uh, and William F. Buckley. And will soon, in three weeks, I believe, will be out with his latest book on Ed Fulner, the retiring founder of the Heritage Foundation. He's currently chairman of the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation. What I want to talk to you about is, is our foundation at the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation. And I want to focus on a success story and that it is possible to make a difference and how we did that. And this story goes back to January of uh, 1990. It's about two months after the fall of the Berlin Wall, which Tim made reference to. And my wife, Anne, <clears throat> who would be with us this evening, but unfortunately came down with a bad cough and cold, can't be with us. But Anne and I and our daughter, Elizabeth, were having Sunday brunch. And already, it was just two months after the wall had come down, I said, you know, already I can see that people are forgetting about communism and, and what it did and the victims of it and the crimes of it. And Ed said, you know, <clears throat> what we need is a memorial to the victims of communism. And I said, terrific. And I got out a paper napkin and wrote that down. And the next day I called Ambassador Lev Dobriansky and I said, Lev, let you and I get to work on this and make this happen. And we said about it, and Lev had been chairman of the Captive Nations Committee. He had also been an ambassador under Ronald Reagan. He knew communism as well as anybody with a Ukrainian background, as anybody in Washington, D.C. And we got to work. It was not an overnight success. The resolution was introduced, but was not passed uh, authorizing a memorial until December of 1993, some almost four years later. And it was signed by Bill Clinton. Why? How could that be? Well, it so happens that it, that same month of December, he was meeting with Boris Yeltsin. Big summit meeting. And they were going to have a new bit of legislation called the Friendship R for Russia, Us US Act. So he wanted to be able to show to Boris Yeltsin that here was a new era <clears throat> that we could work, U.S. could work with Russia. So he went to the Congress, which had to pass this act, and asked for unanimous consent. And Dana Rohrbacher from California, a staunch conservative, said, no, I'm not going to allow a unanimous consent. Well, said the speaker, who was Mr. Tom Foley, a Democrat, a liberal Democrat. Dana, what do you want? And he said, well, I'd like you to approve a memorial to the victims of communism. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> he wanted desperately to get this act passed for his president. It went to the Senate. Unanimous consent for the act. Jesse Helms stood up and said, no unanimous consent. 
Well, said the majority leader, Jesse, what do you want? And Jesse said, well, you know, what I'd really like is a memorial to the victims of communism. And so it was passed that way. Uh, some people say to me, well, why do you bother Lee? You know, communism. Communism's dead. No longer a threat. You know, no longer, you know. Cool it, Edwards, you know. So, oh. Well, communism is alive and all too well in China, for example. Now, China, yes. It's been some liberalization in the economic sphere. I've been to China. I've been to Shanghai. I've been to Beijing. I've lectured there. I've seen the skyscrapers and so forth. But basic human rights are still not being honored. They're still being smothered. They're still being squelched. They're still being denied to the citizens of China, particularly through something called the Lao Gai. It's the Chinese version of the Gulag, forced labor camps. There are 1,000 forced labor camps in China right now, in which political prisoners are being sent if they dare to raise too much fuss about the political direction of China. Of course, we all know about North Korea. And uh, Tim has already made reference to the fact there that 22 million people live in tyranny in North Korea because of a communist dictatorship and a dictatorship of the Communist Party. But you may say, or some people have said to me, well, Lee, okay, you know, China, North Korea, it's terrible. Maybe Cuba, we should be a little bit good, but, but you know, this is America. You know, what difference does it make here in America? Okay, let me give you some examples. Did you know that there was a Stalin bust, a bust of Joseph Stalin? at the National D-Day Memorial in Bedford, Virginia. A Stalin of, yes, a Stalin bust at a National D-Day Memorial in Bedford, Virginia, about 125 miles from here. That's Virginia, not Maryland. <clears throat> That's Virginia, not, right. Thank you, Tim. Outrageous, unconscionable, unacceptable. And so we worked with the American Legion we put the pressure on, we had petitions, we got the press in, involved in this, and they backed off and they've taken down the Stalin bust. I guess they should be congratulated for that, even though it was incredibly stupid for them to do it to begin with. But there's been some talk about, well, maybe we can still figure out a way, and so we're continuing to watch that situation. In New York City is the KGB bar. The KGB bar down in Greenwich Village. Can you imagine a Gestapo bar? <laughs> Eighth graders at a Chicago school doing a project on self-esteem selected quotations of Fidel Castro and Mao Zedong. Mao Zedong, the greatest mass murderer of the 20th century, responsible probably for 60 or 70 million Chinese as a result of his incredibly dangerous and insane policies there in China. Now, I don't blame the kids. I blame the teachers. And that's why it's so important that we have something like the Curriculum on Communism, which is intended not only for the high school pupils, but for the high school teachers. We've got to educate them as well. There was an open air celebration of St. Petersburg, 1917. An open air celebration of St. Petersburg, beginning of the Soviet, Rev the Bolshevik Revolution, Revolution, 1917. <clears throat> Young people with giant hammers and sickles, red flags, martial music. Now where was this? Was this in Red Square in Moscow? No, the new Oxford High School in, are you ready, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> Is it any wonder that students make these kinds of, of, of <coughs> insults, of desecrations, really? when you have Webster's Dictionary saying this. Now the Webster's Dictionary is the one which is used in all the high schools, all the colleges. 
Here's how it defines communism. Quote, a social system marked by the common ownership of the means of production and common sharing of labor and projects. That's it. No. How antiseptic can you be? No mention of the gulag, the killing fields of Cambodia, the tiger cages of Vietnam, the Isle of Pines in Cuba, the 100 million victims of communism, which by the way is more victims, more deaths than all of the wars of the 20th century. 100 million victims. So, my friends, there's much work to be done and we at the foundation will continue to celebrate the dedication of our memorial each June. You're invited to it. We will multiply the visitors to our online museum. Please visit it, globalmuseumoncommunism.org. We're going to distribute our curriculum on communism to high school students, public schools, private schools, parochial schools, and home schools. And we're going to move forward with our bricks and mortar museum. We're committed to telling the truth about communism because we know that the truth will keep us free. Thank you very much.